Hi, this is Craig Stocks for Craig Stocks Arts. In my last tutorial, we looked at ways to visualize photos framed and hanging on the wall in a room, as in the example shown here. And during the process of putting that tutorial together, I kind of became a little bit enchanted with the idea of mechanizing the process of creating the frame for the photo. And what I really wanted to accomplish was to mechanically set up a way to go from a simple image to this type of image and allow for some user inputs along the way. I wanted to be able to control the width of the mat, the thickness of the frame, the size of the image, um, and I wanted to also accommodate the concept of optical centering, which is having a little bit more weight on the bottom of the image, so a little bit thicker frame and or a little bit thicker mat, I should say, at the, along the bottom. So during this tutorial what I want to do is go through uh, first of all how to set this up and I have set up a tutorial on my website that explains a little bit about the process and also has the details of how to download the two pieces that you need to make it work and how to install them on your computer. I'll also step through those during this video tutorial so you can see the process and then we'll go through how to apply the, the script. What it's the process is using a, uh, a simple JavaScript script that's written for Photoshop uh, that is really just doing a few simple things. It's uh, creating some new layers, flattening the image, uh, applying some saved layer styles. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. To install the script, I've included two links on the tutorial, one for the JavaScript the, the script that you need to download and install, and then secondly the saved styles. So to download these, simply right click on the link and choose Save Target As, and then save that somewhere where you'll be able to find it, uh, probably on your desktop would be a logical place to do that. I've already done that. Now the next step, once you've downloaded those, first we need to copy the the optically centered frame script from where you downloaded it to some place where Photoshop can find it. Now I'm using a Windows PC so where all we need to copy it to is to the on the hard drive to program files Adobe Photoshop CS5 presets scripts and again I've got that detail uh, written in the tutorial on my website so you don't need to take notes or write all of that down. You can follow along there. Once you've copied the script over to that folder, and if you're using Windows it'll probably ask you if you're sure you really want to do that, and, and yes you really do. Uh, it won't work if you don't. Uh, once that's copied over, you can then start Photoshop, or if you already had Photoshop running you'll need to quit and restart it so that Photoshop can find the script. And you can confirm once you go into Photoshop, if you look at File, Scripts, you should see Optically Centered Frame as one of the options. If you don't see that, then very likely you copied that file to the wrong location. The next thing you need to do, Windows is acting up here, is install the layer styles. And to do that, we'll just go to the preset manager. And in the preset manager, choose scripts, I'm sorry, styles, and then load. And again, you'll want to go to where that uh, frame styles.asl folder or file was downloaded and load that. And that will add two new layer styles to your styles palette. And at that point we're ready to run. So let me close the sample image and we'll recreate that. Yeah, I'll close this also. So here's a starting image. It's about uh, a little under 2,000 pixels wide. And to put a frame around this image it's as simple as going to File, Scripts, optically centered frame and there's three simple uh, parameters that you need to enter. The first is what size do we want the image to be and what you're selecting here is the dimension of the long side of the image, so in this case it would be the width 
and it defaults to 2,000 pixels. Let's change it and put in 1,500 just for something different. Next is how wide do you want the mat surrounding the image. And this isn't the total width of the mat, this is just the amount you want it to extend around the image. Defaults to 175 and that's fine. And lastly is how thick do you want the frame and the default is 100 pixels. When we click OK, Photoshop does the work for us and there's a copy of the image. You can see it's named framed image dash and then whatever name you had on your original file. And if we look at the layers to see what was done, here's our original and let me turn off the layer effects. There's the original image. So what the script did was expand the canvas and it does it in two steps so that it has a, the extra amount at the bottom. Then it adds a new layer below it and fills it with white so that you have the image on a white background. It applies layer effects to the background image that creates the frame and the mat and the colors and the textures and the, the shadows, everything you see here is all done with, with just a layer effect. And that's done by applying this layer effect called 100 pixel frame. And then the last thing it does is apply a layer effects set to the original image layer. And what that does is create this little bit of a mat cutout around the frame in some a little bit of shading to give it some some depth and dimension and that's the, the style uh, matte bevel on image so that's really all it takes to to do the magic and again you can change the dimensions as you step through the script to get different size images different size frames different size mats uh, one of the advantages of doing it this way because it's applied as layer styles it, they're completely editable. For instance, if you decide you don't like the, uh, the color of the mat, you can turn off that style and just have a white mat, or you can double click on the word color overlay, and that'll bring up the layer style dialog box where we could choose an entirely different color. Uh, maybe instead of this tan or buff color, maybe we want a, a light blue something like that. Uh, whatever, you know, whatever you think looks best with your image and you even get to preview it as you're going through the process. There's also it's running a little bit slow, there's also a pattern overlay that gives a little bit of a texture to that mat. Again if you don't like that you can turn it off so you can change the color, change the texture, you can change the bevel and emboss settings and so forth. And If you find that you you frequently want to change the color of this for instance or some other feature you can save a new copy of this 100 pixel frame styles just by going to the style menu and going to the, the fly out here I'm sorry. You do that by clicking on the new style button here and you'll get a pop-up to give it a name, give it the name 100 pixel frame and save it and then you'll have a new updated version of that layer style that the script will apply the next time you run it. Now as you play with some of the options in the script one of the other things you can do maybe you you like everything but you don't like the frame. Uh, when you run the script, if we enter a value of 0, let's keep the 2000 and let's go with a 250 size mat and let's enter 0 for the size of the frame and in that case we'll just get a nice white mat without applying the layer styles to the underlying uh, layer that has the frame on it. So a, a width of zero basically gives you no frame but still gives you an optically centered image on a white background. Now, you may find this useful for posting images to your blog or a website. Uh, you may like to use this for visualizing images. 
Uh, you may just find it educational to see how the script and the saved layer styles work together. One other note of caution that I would add here. Uh, let me, let's just start with this image and let me run through the, the script just taking all of the defaults and everything works just fine. Now without changing anything on the image let's get rid of the effects here and again one of the advantages of having these effects is you can apply them to any image. If I wanted to apply that frame style to this image I just have to select that layer go to the saved layer styles click on 100 pixel frame and there's the frame. I discovered there's a bit of a hidden gotcha in the way layer styles are saved and applied. Let's change the image size on this image and I'm not going to change any of the pixel dimensions. It's 2550 wide and 1878 and at a resolution of 90 pixels per inch. Let's change this from 90 to 360. Turn off free sample. So we're not changing anything other than the pixel dimensions. I'm not resampling the image. It's still 2550 by 1878. Click OK. But now if I apply this 100 pixel frame, what I actually get is a 400 pixel frame. The, the Photoshop scales the saved layer styles based on the pixel per inch resolution of the image you're applying it to. Personally, I don't like that. Uh, I think when I when I save a layer style that has a 100 pixel frame, I expect to get a 100 pixel frame uh, kind of regardless of the resolution of the image. To me, a pixel is a pixel. If I had specified inches, that would be a different matter. But that's the way Adobe has designed it and, and apparently the way they think it should work. So just kind of watch out for that little gotcha. If you do redefine the 100 pixel frame or the matte bevel on image, be sure to do it while you're, while you're using an image that's at 90 pixels per inch because Photoshop will remember what was the pixel per inch setting when that style was saved and it will scale the style up or down to whatever image you're applying it to. So that's it. I hope you find this useful and informative and if you have any questions you can get in touch with me through my website at craigstocksarts.com. Thanks, and have a great day.